Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 17 first. The word of God says here in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? He's a new creation. Amen? All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How do you become in Christ? How do you become in Christ? No. How do you become in Christ? If you know the answer, raise your hand. <laughs> Elsie? Amen. That's how we become in Christ, by receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen? That's how we become in Christ. Hi, Shandy. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to verse 18. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Amen. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We've been reconciled through Jesus to God. Amen. Let's go down to verse 21. For he has made him talking about Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. Amen? That we might be made, what? The righteousness of God in him. Okay? Because of Jesus, we, we became the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay? Now, righteousness, you have to understand. You really have to understand because if you want to go cast our devil's or do anything, just preaching, if you will. Okay, the devil's going to lie to you. You're not righteous enough. You're not holy enough. Who do you think you are? Huh? You can't just stand up there and say things. That's the devil, of course. But this is where you have to know that you know that you know who you are in Jesus Christ. Amen? that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, okay? When we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we become a brand new creation, brand new, okay? And, and because of Jesus, we became righteous. Now, let's look at righteousness, okay? Our relationship with God is restored. When you go to John chapter 1, in verse 12, John 1, 12. <clears throat> but as many as received him, Jesus, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen? So here you see, when we received Jesus, we became what? Amen. Children of God. Amen? We became children of God. Okay, First John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. And it says in verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called, what? The sons of God. Amen? What kind of love is that, huh? I mean, really, that's a tremendous love that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. Okay, and then it says in verse 2, Beloved, now, now are we the sons of God. Not tomorrow, but right now. Because we have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right now we are children of God. Amen? Now, you know, sometimes people say, oh, we're, we're all children of God. No. Creation of God, yes, but we who have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are children of God. Amen? So when they say, you know, everybody is a child of God, no, unless you've received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen? So here you see our relationship with God is restored. Now, righteousness is a gift from God. Okay? It's a gift from God. <laughs> Excuse me. Romans chapter 5. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 5. 
And we're going to look at verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance, abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, underline that, the gift of righteousness shall, shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen? Therefore, as by one, excuse me, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of on, uh, all life. Amen? Notice, it's a free gift. There's absolutely nothing you can do to become more righteous than you are right now. Did you know that? Good works don't uh, make it. Okay? There's absolutely nothing that we cannot do. It's, this righteousness is from God, and it's a gift that was given. Our own righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. Okay? So if you look at your own righteousness... It doesn't mean a thing. Let's go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. You know, sometimes people say, oh, it's, he's such a righteous man. Talk about an unbeliever. He's not really righteous. He may have, be a good man doing good deeds, but not righteous. Amen. We are righteous. Amen? Amen. So we have to know the difference there. What did I say? Psalms, not Psalms. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Look at the beginning. But we are all as unclean things, and all our righteousness is what? Are as filthy rags. Amen? So our own righteousness doesn't mean a thing. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> We're going to look at verse. Dum, dum, dum. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Amen? He's saying that everything that he lost, okay, doesn't mean a thing. That I may win Christ, verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Underline that. Not having my own righteousness. Amen? Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen? So it's the righteousness of God by faith. You have to excuse me one second. I am not comfortable. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Righteousness is the ability to stand in the presence of God without any sense of guilt condemnation, fear, inferiority, and what have you. Are you with me? Okay. As a matter of fact, th there's no more consciousness of sin. You know, when you s go before God, he sees you the way he sees Jesus. Jesus is righteous, yes? Because Jesus is righteous, we are righteous. Why? We're one with him. So when you come before God, he doesn't see you. I know that sometimes, you know, we, we feel like we're not righteous enough to come before the throne of grace. Feel. And that's the devil. Because it doesn't line up. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen? But it feels sometimes that you're not righteous enough. Again, that's the devil. Because if you realize that God, when you come before God, that he sees you the way he sees Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because we are one with Jesus. Okay, we have received him, so we are one with Christ. And so when you come before God, that's why we can come what? boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. 
You don't have to crawl. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid. But you come boldly. You understand? Because the devil wants us to feel like we can't come before God. Yes, we can. <clears throat> because there's no consciousness of sin. We might think there is, even though, you see, if you mess up, of course, none of you mess up. Amen? Amen. Isn't that right, Chandi? <laughs> none of us mess up. Amen? So we think. But we do. And the moment you mess up, what do you do? Immediately apply 1 John 1, 9. That if we confess our sin, he's what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the moment we say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm messed up, please forgive me. You receive his forgiveness. Amen? Forgive yourself. That's the key. Forgive yourself and go on. And then half an hour later, you ask him again to forgive you. He'll be scratching his head and say, huh? What you talking about? Because he does not remember your sin no more. He is not like human beings, and that includes born-again believers. You know what I'm saying, huh? <laughs> when you mess up, you forgive him, but you remember. 20 years later, you still remember. Hello? <laughs> None of you are like that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but he does not remember your sin no more. So we have to do the same thing. You know that? Because if we want to be really like Christ, we have to do what he says in his word. <clears throat> okay? Go, we're in Philippians, right? Go to um, verse 13, Philippians 3.13. And it says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, forgetting the things that are behind, amen? amen? And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of, Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. Now notice he says here, forgetting the things that are behind. And many times that is difficult for us to do. Hello? We can say, you know, it's, let's say you have boyfriend, girlfriend. They broke up because one of them messed up. So you forgive them, right? But you broke up. And you've forgotten. Forgiven, forgotten. Then one day you're in a, in a restaurant or so. And then you hear this song that was your song with the person. Hello. And you remember. And then you look back. Hello. You look back at how good it was. Amen. And then guess what? The devil bring all the mess, all the pain, all the hurt back to you. That's why he's, God says, don't look back. There's nothing behind there. Amen? Actually, the only thing that you, the only time you look back is when you have to give testimony how God brought you from there to here. That's when you look back. Okay? But otherwise, forget the things that are behind. If you don't, you're going to be a mess. Because people are always looking back, always looking behind. That's why a lot of people are in, in depression. Hello. You understand what I'm saying? Zoom land. Amen? So don't look back, forgetting the things that are behind. You reach forth unto the things that are before you. Okay? Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 2, For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers, once perched, should have had no more consciousness of sins. Amen? 
And it says in verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there's a remembrance again made of sins every year. Now, with us, because of Jesus, because he sacrificed himself and spilled his blood for us and washed us, okay, there should be no consciousness of sin, okay? The sin consciousness comes when we listen to the devil and when we keep looking back, rehearsing what we have done, what we have done wrong. Don't get quiet on me, eh? You understand? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Amen. That's why we're not to look back. It's very important. I've learned it over the years. Don't look back. If I kept looking back, I wouldn't be sitting here now. You understand? Amen. There's no consciousness of sin. We have been declared righteous. Again, that's not our own righteousness. Amen. Romans chapter 4. <coughs> Romans chapter 4. Uh, verse 24, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, verse 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Justification, we were declared righteous. Amen? Amen. Romans 5, yeah, Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified or made righteous by faith. Underline that. It's by faith that you're made righteous. righteous. Amen? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We have been made righteous by faith, not by feelings. Okay? How many, when you woke up this morning, you felt so righteous? <laughs> Hallelujah. None of us, amen? But whether we feel it or not, by faith, we are. Because the word of God says we are righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We have been declared righteous, okay? If there's a, a, if there's sin consciousness, okay? It gives us a, a sense of unworthiness. But we are worthy. Why are we worthy? Because he made us worthy. Okay? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. He has made us worthy through his blood. Revelation chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us. Underline that. He loved us and did what? Washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen? That's, his, that's how much he loved us. Verse 6. And has made us what? Kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He made us what? Kings and priests unto us, unto him rather. Okay? And if he has made us kings and priests, are we unworthy? No. He made us worthy. Do you see that? He thought we were worthy enough to be kings and priests unto God. Unto God. Amen? So if you feel unworthy... And I know sometimes you do. Okay? That's just the devil. Anytime the devil puts a thought in your mind or a feeling that is contrary to the word of God, that's the devil. Don't go with that. Amen? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 9. So you are worthy. You know, because of Jesus, because of his perfect sacrifice, 
was offered once and for all, we re receive restoration. Hebrews chapter 9, verse <clears throat> 11. It says here, but Christ, being come in a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, okay? Neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by, by his own blood, underline that, by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen? He entered into the holy place with his blood. And because of that, we receive eternal redemption. He obtained eternal redemption for, for us. Okay? Okay? It says here, for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a hyper sprinkling the unclean sacrifice to the, purif to the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, underline that, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen? So it's through the eternal spirit he offered himself without spot. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen? You know, when you just simply look at what he's done, it blows your mind. You know? It, it doesn't have to be with big words or anything. Just simply looking what he has done, it, it really just blows your mind. And it, it's just, I was telling the Lord how much I love him. Okay? And so he said, I know. I love you too. And I told him too. I said, Lord, you know, I, I'm telling you I love you, but I really have no idea how much you really love me because what, the way I love you is nothing compared to the way you love me. You know what I'm saying? So it really blows your mind when you think about what he has done. Why? Because he loved us. Isn't that neat? Okay. So anyway, there's restoration. Okay? What is being restored? Our fellowship is being res restored. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. In verse 20. But Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will con come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. And like you heard my husband say that people would preach this, that this is for the unbeliever, but it is not. It's for the believer. Amen? Yeah. Our fellowship is restored. First John 1. You see, when Adam and sin walked on this earth, they had tremendous fellowship with God. You know, they would walk in the garden, talk to God. Amen? They had fellowship with God. But then when, he, when they sinned, that fellowship was what? Broken. Amen? And, of course, we changed what? Fathers. Hello. Hello. First, God was the father, but when they sinned, the devil became the father. Yes? Okay. Now, don't, don't go to people if you want to get them saved. you got to get saved because your father is the devil. Don't do that. <laughs> He'll hit you over the head. <laughs> don't do that. Let them get into the word, and they'll find out that the father was the devil. Okay? that now Jesus, they need to have Jesus to become a child of God. So you see that because of the sin, 
okay? They changed what? Fathers. Instead of God, now the devil became the father. And every person born into this world is born as a child of the devil. Okay? That's why every person born in this world, in order to become a child of God, to have that fellowship, a relationship again, you have to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Okay? So, our fellowship is restored. First John chapter 1, verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is what? With the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So our fellowship with the Father is restored. Number two, our right standing with God has been restored. Okay? And therefore we can come what? Boldly before the throne of grace in Hebrews chapter 4. As I mentioned before, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore come what? Crawling before the throne of grace. Amen? Oh. <laughs> but that's what we used to do, didn't we? Because we felt so unworthy. Huh? That we can... We come crawling. No, he says, come boldly. Why? Again, because now we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Now we have right standing with God, and we can come before him without any sin sense of guilt, condemnation, or fear, as if we have never sinned, because he sees us the way he sees Jesus. And that's why we can come boldly. Amen? Amen. Like I said before, it, it, that's something. So our righteous, righteousness, excuse me, right standing is restored, okay? Romans chapter 5. Let's see what else is restored. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1. Therefore, being justified or de declared righteous by faith, we have what? Peace with God. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? How many before you were saved had peace? Nobody raises their hand. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> now we have peace with God. Amen? Amen? And praise God, we have peace with God. In John 14. Because <clears throat> I remember when I first got saved. Everything left. And I just felt a tremendous peace come over me. And I know but many of you are like that. Amen? John 14, 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen? Amen. The world's peace is nothing. Because just like that, it's gone. Amen? Just look with the pandemic. There's no peace. A lot of people have no peace whatsoever. Because if they're afraid that they would Get the virus. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Are you still with me? Don't go home yet, okay? <laughs> ah, verse 15. Colossians 3, 15, 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be you thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Okay? God has given us peace. That's why he said, my peace I give unto you. 
it's not an outward thing. It's an inward thing. You know, you can, you can have all kinds of problems. <clears throat> okay? All kinds of circumstances. But God's peace can be in your heart. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. Philippians 4. You, should, you all should know the scripture. In verse 6, be anxious for nothing. Amen? But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Okay? So he doesn't want you to be anxious. First Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Amen? So you give it to God. Verse 7, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do you see that? Amen? He said, don't let be anxious. He said, cast your care upon him. And when you do that, you will have the peace of God which passes all understanding. Are you with me? But in order to maintain the peace that God has given you, you're going to have to do verse 8. <clears throat> and if many people don't do that. I'm talking about Christians. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, lovely, of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. In order for you to maintain the peace of mind that God has given you, you already have peace in your heart. Amen? Amen. But the peace of mind that God has given you, it says, in order to maintain that, you're going to have to do what? Think on these things. What are these things? Cute. The things that are good, uh, good, pure, lovely, of a good report. Amen? Where do you find that? Amen. In the word of God. Those are the promises of God that he's given us. Amen? And that's how you, you can, you know, you can be in a mess uh, outwardly, like all kinds of circumstances. And then you have a grin on your face, and people say, what's wrong with you? You have all the, these problems. What's wrong with you? Because you have peace. You don't have to walk around with your face all on, on the floor. Hello. You have peace because you know God will take care of it. You know you don't have to be anxious. You know it's in his hand, and he will take care of it. Amen? Amen? <clears throat> so that's how you maintain the peace that God has given you. What else is restored? Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. In verse 1 it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen? Amen. Which is your reasonable service. Now how do you do that? It's very simple. Here I am. Do whatever you want with me, Lord. I will go wherever you tell me to go, but just not India. <laughs> I will do whatever you want me to do. What do you mean I have to talk to them? I can't stand them. Hello? This is where you put your will with God's will. Amen? <laughs> because it's, you know, we say it's easy to do, but it's not. It's not. You, you understand? Now, people are very unlovable. You, you, all of you here are very lovable, okay? <laughs> but uh, some people are really unlovable. And then God tells you to go and talk to them and minister to them, and you don't want to go. So here you get the fight between your will and God's will. So what are you going to do? 
always do God's will. Amen. That's one thing that we always, always have to do his will. Even though sometimes we don't want to do it, go forgive him. Uh -uh. It's his fault. You forgive him. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's his fault. <laughs> okay? And then finally you say, okay, Lord. You put your will with his will. Are you with me? Yes. Zoomers, are you with me? I see some this year. Okay. Okay? So the next time I call you up and have you preach something that you haven't studied, <laughs> you will forgive me. Amen. Amen? Because you have to put your will with God's will, and he says to forgive me. <sighs> Praise God. Okay. Our faith is restored. Amen? Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but what transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? We have to renew our mind through the word of God. And it takes a while. Hello? It doesn't work overnight. It takes a while. Amen? <clears throat> and then it says here, but you know, if you don't do that, you're going to be miserable. You're really going to be miserable if you don't do that, if you don't renew your mind. You know, I had to renew my mind in the area of being timid and shy. Am I timid and shy? No. Is it because of me? No, it's because of the word. I had to get in the word. I had to meditate on the word. I had to speak that word. And then I had to step out. Hello. Amen. You got to step out. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? I had to renew my mind in that area that I am not inferior. Just one amen. Thank you. Especially when you look at somebody and say, praise God, look at the ministry. Every person that they, you know, touch, they just, boom, fall out. Every person I minister to, they're standing like sticks. <laughs> Hello? And the devil comes, plays these thoughts in your mind. Eh, you don't have enough power. You see, you're going to be inferior or feel inferior when you compare yourself with someone else. You understand? Yes. Okay? So don't compare yourself. Okay? Verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, <clears throat> not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every, given to every man, what? The measure of faith. Amen? We have faith. That's why we got saved. Because we got saved through faith. Amen? Someone spoke the word. You heard. A seed was planted. Someone watered. And guess what? You heard the word. So faith has started already. And you received. Amen? Amen? So your faith is restored. What else is restored? Your freedom. Freedom. Okay? Freedom from what? Dominion of sin. Freedom from dominion of sin. Romans chapter 6. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 14. Yeah, I start with verse 11. Likewise, reckon you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, 
that our members as instrument of righteousness unto God. Verse 14, for sin shall not have what? Dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin is synonymous with Satan. Remember, we changed fathers, right? So we're not under Satan's dominion. And if you don't know that, you're in trouble. Okay, but if you know it, then you can, you know, Satan will not be able to really harass you if you know the word of God. Are you with me? <clears throat> Let's go down to 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, <clears throat> whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 18. Being then made what? Free from sin. Free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Amen? In other words, we do not have to sin. We have a will. Maybe one day I'll teach on the will. Okay? Brother. <laughs> but we don't have to sin. We can. And sometimes we do. I'm not talking about carousing out there and, you know, doing all that mess there. Just simply being disobedient to God is as I am. Now you get quiet on me. <laughs> simply being disobedient to God is sin. You understand? Amen? <clears throat> All right, let's go on. Freedom from guilt and condemnation. Isn't that nice? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says here, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? If not, come up here, get you saved. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay? Now, we are free from guilt and condemnation because God has made us free. Yes? Okay. However, how come we still feel guilty and condemned when we do certain things and we know we shouldn't have done? Because that's the devil. He hits us over the head with guilt and condemnation. <clears throat> okay. It says here, who walk not after the flesh, who doesn't walk after the feelings, after the thoughts that the devil puts in your mind. But walk how? After the spirit. How do you walk after the spirit? Walking according to God's word. So when guilt and condemnation comes, instead of feeling guilt and condemnation, okay, you reject it. And speak what the word of God says, that there is no guilt and condemnation. You walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. Is that clear? Yes. Amen? What else? Freedom from fear. And that's, sometimes that's a biggie. <laughs> Even still with Christians. Romans 8, since we're there, in verse 15. For you have not received this, excuse you, the spirit of bondage again, on the line again, <coughs> again to fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen? Amen? Why? Because fear is of the devil. Okay? When Adam sinned, he opened the door for fear to come in. Okay? Uh, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy. That one you should know by heart. But I want you to go there because I want to show you something else before that. 
Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting of my, on, of my hands. Okay? We all have received gifts. Amen? <coughs> and the Lord says here, what? Stir up the gift. Whatever gift it is. If God has given you the gift of healing, stir it up by doing what? I didn't ask you, brother. <laughs> Praying for the sick. Sick. That's how you stir up the gift. Amen. Whatever gift that God has given you, you stir up that gift by doing it. Okay? <clears throat> and then he says in verse 7, and that's why many times we don't stir up the gift because of verse 7. Fear. And it says in verse 7, for God has not given you the spirit of fear. Okay? God didn't give it to us. Who tries to give it to us? The devil. The devil. Amen? God has not given you the spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, when you hesitate, Stepping out, that's a devil trying to bring fear in that area. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. So this is where you have to rise up and come against that fear. I remember the first time uh, I had to do a miracle healing service by myself. when my husband was thrown out of Singapore. And, uh, you know, I had to do the school, which is okay, no problem. But flyers had already gone out for a miracle healing service that he was conducting. So I said to him, I said, we better cancel this because you're not here. And he says, no. I said, what do you mean no? <laughs> he said, you do it. So what do you mean I do it? Your name is there, not mine. I like to argue like that. <laughs> he said, no, you do it. So anyway, I had to do it. Was I scared? Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> I've, ministered, <clears throat> I've ministered together with him, but not by myself. <clears throat> there were about 350 people, people there. And praise God for one of our students, okay, who became a good friend, who's gone home to be with the Lord already. I'm sitting back there. I mean, I prayed. I didn't sleep, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I prayed all night. I asked God, I beg God, please. <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> and so it was time, okay? Did I have a message? No. I'm sitting in, on the platform behind the curtain. They finished the worship, and this brother, one of our former students, came and said, Pastor Margaret, are you okay? I said, no. <laughs> he patted me on the shoulder. You'll be okay. <laughs> anyway, it was time. And I got up there. I don't know what I said, but I preached. I gave an altar call. People came forward to get you know, saved. And I ministered healing. And it was the one time where I really saw God move in an unusual way, where this man could hardly walk. And he came on the platform with help, and God had me minister to him. You see, at first I tried to do it the way he did it. I can't do it that way. <laughs> Hello. He's different from me. I'm different from him. Okay? 
And so the Lord said, no, don't do that way. Just follow me, which I did. And before the man uh, spoke things, okay, and I pointed at him, he was healed. Before he got to the middle of the platform, he was completely healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. All glory to Jesus. Amen. I almost fell over. Okay. <laughs> you understand? Amen. But there was fear. Because I've never done it before. But I had to come against it. And then you have a choice. You understand? So God stirred up the gifts in you. You have to go do it. Okay? And even though fear comes, you have to come against it and go ahead and step out. And the moment you step out, the whole thing breaks. You understand? Okay? I had to forgive him, though. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> For God has not given us a spirit of fear. He gave us power. Amen. <clears throat> he gave us power. Praise God. Love. And a sound mind. There's nothing wrong with your mind. You have a sound mind. Amen. You put the word of God in you. You will have a sound mind. Amen. Okay? All right. Freedom from anxiety. Oh, no. Go to First John 4, 4. How many of you can quote that one? Thank you. I didn't hear any of the ladies. <laughs> First John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome him. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen? And that's something that we have to always remind ourselves. Who is in us? Quite often we forget who is in us. We cannot forget that. Okay? All right. Let's go on. Freedom from worry and anxiety. Like I said, First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon him because he does what? Care for you. And don't take it back. How do you take it back? When worry comes, you start to worry again. Uh-uh, you command it to go from you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Verse 25. It says here, therefore, Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall, oh, excuse me, not yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? In other words, he said, Don't worry what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Amen? Not even after... We're finished. Don't worry where you're going to eat. <laughs> Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more and better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Verse 28. And why do you take thought for Raymond? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin, okay? And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Hello? Therefore, take no thought. Saying, don't take the thought, saying, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to put on? Okay? And then it says, and here you see the Father's care in verse 32. Uh, 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. He knows you need all these things. Amen? 
Will he provide? Yes, he will. Okay? And then it says in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, seek ye first. Give yourself over to the things of God. Give yourself over completely to God. Let him take care of you. Not too many amens. Amen. <laughs> amen. Because he's your father, and he will take care of you. That's why we don't have to be anxious. Matthew 11. Since I'm in Matthew. <sighs> 28. He says here in verse 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavily laden. I will give you rest. Okay? When you're labor and heavily laden, that means you have a lot of, you're carrying things on your shoulder. You're carrying your worries, anxieties, and problems on your shoulder. And he says, come to me, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn about Jesus. Amen? Amen. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest into, unto your souls. Verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? I'm almost finished. Freedom from inferiority. I mentioned about inferiority. And you look at other people. What did I say? Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. We have freedom from inferiority. Verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He has performed a good thing in you. Amen? Amen. Romans 8, 11. Keep your finger in Philippians. Nah, might as well do that. Philippians 4. We saw it earlier. No, we didn't. 13. What does it say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? We can do all things through Christ. Now go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, does he? Yes. He that raised up Christ from the dead <laughs> shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Amen? Amen. And many times we forget who is in us. We forget the Holy Spirit is in us. The same scripture here you can use for sickness and disease, okay? That the same spirit who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me. And he that raised up Christ from the dead will also quicken my mortal body by his spirit who dwells in me. Amen? We, because we have freedom from sickness and disease. 1 Peter 2.24. Whose his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were, were, were healed. Past tense. Amen? Psalms 107.20. Write these scriptures down because, you know, you can use this as a confession or as medicine, if you will. Okay? when you need healing. Psalms 107. Verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Amen. <clears throat> he sent his word and healed them. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 8.
These are just some of the scriptures that you can use for healing. Matthew uh, 8, 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all, A-L-L, that were sick. Amen? Verse 17, that it might be, excuse me, fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, and by his stripes, I add this on, we are healed. Amen? You make it personal. Make it personal. That might be fulfilled, was, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses, and I add on, by whose stripes I was healed. Amen? Amen? Oh, I'm going over here. Galatians. <clears throat> Freedom from sickness and disease. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians chapter 3. Thirteen, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for him, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Okay? Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed me from sickness and disease. Christ has redeemed me from pain and what have you. Amen? And by his stripes I am healed. You can just run everything together. First Peter 2.24, okay? who his own self bear my sins in his own body on the tree, that I, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes I was healed. For you sent your word and healed me and delivered me from my destruction. Amen? So you just run it all together, okay? And I thank you, Lord, that you are my healer. You, my miracle worker, and by your stripes, I am healed. Amen? And I'm going to have to stop here. I will continue next week. Are we here next week? Oh. Amen? Amen? So use these scriptures, the ones that I just gave you, okay? For he- these are just some. You find your own for healing. But we must know that we know that we know who we are in Jesus Christ. If you don't know who you are in Jesus Christ, you're going to have a problem. Amen? If you don't know that you can, can come boldly before the throne of grace, okay, because you're so sin conscious, you have a problem. That's how a lot of, I'm talking about born again believers, they have problems because they don't know who they are in Christ, they don't know what they have in Christ. They don't know where they are in Christ. Where are you in Christ? Huh? (laughs) Where are you in Christ? Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Everybody just looked at me, huh? (laughs) That's why I say you have to know who you are in Christ. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. Where you are, you're seated in high places in Christ Jesus. What you have in Christ? What do you have in Christ? (laughs) All things that pertain to life and to godliness, yes. And you have power over all devils in Jesus' name. Amen? So... We have to get into the word of God to find out who we are, what we have, amen, what belongs to us, so that we can walk boldly, because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm not finished, but I'll stop here.
Lift up your hands. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I praise you for this time, and I thank you for your word. I thank it went forth with power under the anointing in Jesus' name. I thank you that you seal this word into our spirit, man, in Jesus' name. Father, I speak right now that each person that listens to me right now will know without a shadow of a doubt that they are the righteousness of God in Christ, Amen. that they truly can come boldly before the throne of grace. And Father, when they come to you, you will see them the way you see Jesus because we are one with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we thank you, we praise you, and give you praise, honor, and glory, and all the people say, Amen. 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 Goldfield.